So today we are going to talk about monologues. I know that's everyone's favorite thing to discuss. So we're going to discuss top tips, do's and don'ts, a little bit of my own philosophy on finding monologues and we'll go from there. And hopefully you really like the information that's in here. And if you do, like, comment, subscribe, it helps me out a ton. Um, if you want to see when I post more videos, hit the bell icon near notifications and let's get right into it. <laughs> when you begin your search, you're going to need good sources. Monologue books can be helpful as a starting point for familiarizing yourself with a published playwright's writing style, but shouldn't be relied on for choosing material. Monologue books have a tendency to use material that is common and popular, and a lot of actors have the same books. It's only limited. You get a snapshot of the character. So if you want to start with a monologue book, I recommend reading through the pieces and writing down the playwrights you respond to emotionally, who you find most engaging, and with that list of playwrights, you can search the names of similar writers or you can find less popular plays from those writers. The number one thing you can do to ease your monologue hunt is to be familiar with as much theater as possible. Go see plays, read plays, as many as you can, and make it a habit to be familiar with maybe two plays a week. Dramatist Play Service has a great program called the DPS Book Club, and they'll send you a box of seven plays per quarter. They're not an affiliate, but I just really, really like this resource and think it's a great way to gain familiarity with material that's out there. This program is a selection of both new and classic materials, and it's just a really good place to go to get a whole bunch of plays that you might not know are out there. You can also borrow plays from local libraries or from friends or from teachers, and even if a play selection is small, it's still a good place to start. Local bookstores are another really good resource. If you're looking for plays that you really want to connect to, that you want to know if there is something being done on stages right now, Keep your eyes open for play reviews in large publications. When reading play reviews, there's often a summary of the play that'll give you a good idea of whether or not it's something you can relate to or that you'll respond to emotionally. American Theatre Magazine, New York Times, LA Times, and The Guardian are all really good places to look for theater reviews. So now that you have an idea of where to start on your hunt, what do you look for in a monologue? Find pieces you emotionally connect to and can get lost in right away or that make you laugh. You enjoy the monologue and you'll enjoy the process of working on it so much more and your love of the piece will show in your audition. Passion and enthusiasm are contagious. Finding a piece you love is the first and most important step towards a great audition. Choose pieces within your age range. When you're looking at material, you'll want to consider what age range you present. If you cannot be cast reasonably as a 40-year-old mom of a college student, don't choose a role that reflects that. You want to show that you understand your castability and that you are thorough in finding your pieces. Work on material that reflects how you could be cast today, not 10 years ago or 10 years from now. There are two kinds of monologues in contemporary plays, narrative and active monologues. A narrative monologue is written with descriptive language and usually in the past tense, and an active monologue is a character trying to achieve a specific goal within that moment. Narrative monologues are too internal focused to use for an audition piece, but they can be great for learning how a character views and relates to the world and circumstances. Active monologues are focused on a person or group of people the character wants something from in that moment. Choosing an active monologue will allow for a more dynamic and actionable objectives. Look for an arc. Does the piece have a solid beginning, middle, and end as a standalone piece? If you piece together a monologue, you'll need to make sure that it starts in a clear place and ends in a clear place. Within a monologue, remember you are telling a complete story and it needs to make sense out of context of the play. The auditors should be able to understand who you are, why you are speaking, what you want, and why you stop speaking. Don't simply aim to entertain. There are a lot of websites and resources out there that will tell you you need to be entertaining, but your focus should instead be on engaging with your imaginary scene partner and fully playing the objectives. Be honest and fully engaged within the moment and fully committed to your choices. It is not within your control if the auditors are entertained, and what I don't like about that advice is it can encourage pushing for emotion or playing for effect. You have no control over whether or not your audience responds to your choices. 
All you have control over is going in the room and sharing your interpretation of the character. This brings me to my next point. Don't try to predict what the auditors want to see. This is entirely outside of your control. Don't go into the audition aiming to get cast. Just go into the room and share what you created. There's a great piece of advice out there to book the room, not the role. Remember that you are sharing your art and your acting. You're not privy to the casting process behind the scenes, and your job is not to be the best mind reader and predictor of what they want. You are the only person who can bring your vision to the table, so bring that into the room and leave the rest up to them. I cannot recommend this enough, but work with a coach. It's extremely hard to build an audition in a vacuum. Having a coach will push you to the next level, and in your work, it will give you an extra set of eyes and ears to really bring out your best. Use this to find more colors in your work and to really develop specificity and fine tune. Know your play. You'd be surprised how often this piece of advice is ignored. Once you've picked the pieces you like, read the play in its entirety. Reading the full play gives you context and clues about the character, which will help make your performance richer and more active. The more you know your character, the better equipped you'll be able to embody them fully. Play. Remember to have fun with your pieces. Don't forget that it is your audition, and this is your time, so own it. Be willing to take up space. After all the work you've done on your monologues, the audition is the time to just let it all go and have fun.